Oh, hi. I didn't see you standing there. You want to come in? You want to see something scary? <laughs> hey, sinners, how you doing? You're listening to the Sinful Cuts podcast, the podcast where Sean O'Connor and Shannon Bushman Montalbano break down some of your favorite horror films. We take a look at all the decades, the wild, weird, and wonderful world of horror and all it has to offer. So sit back, tune in, and have some fun. Here we go. Hey, sinners, what's going on? Welcome to another edition of Shortcuts. Shannon, I've been working on the intro, the, f- the food-based intro <laughs> for the week. Okay, so let's do this. Hi, sinners. Welcome to Shortcuts, where we take all the horror happenings for the week and we put it in a big gumbo pot and we reduce it down to the beautiful essence of horror roux. And then we take a funnel and we gently lay you down on a bed of nails and we put the funnel in your ear and we swirl the roux into your ear. And is it any better or it still, it still stinks? How, nice? how do you cook? <laughs> 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 At least four people die every time I make a meal. <laughs> but there you go. I'm sure it's delicious. I'm sure it's delicious. It's okay. We, we have the most delicious of horror happenings for you for the week. But of course, we can't do anything until Shannon takes us through those anniversaries and birthdays. And what do we have, Shannon? Yeah, I got. So I think I got some fun ones this week. So I have okay. three. Okay, all different times, all different genres, all different places, walks of life. So. This would be interesting. All right. What okay. do we got? First one up, celebrating 60 years, so 1964 release, The Last Man on Earth. Oh, come on with Vincent Price. Come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beast. So one of the uh, one of the Italian movies, right? So like basically he was the only American. Everybody else was uh, from Italy where they filmed it, mm-hmm. um, which is beautiful, by the way. Oh, yes. And, um, yeah, so I think a lot of, like, was it true that, like, everybody, like, kind of, like, just read their lines and they just dubbed over it? Like, nobody really knew what they were saying kind of a thing? Uh, Jen, to be fair, I mean, that happened with, uh, let me do my simple math again, one billion (laughs) Italian (laughs) productions. Pretty much. You know, I mean, the the formula from like let's say nineteen uh, from the fifties up until you know well into the eighties, if not the nineties, was get an American star. A lot of the times, it was some uh, like a TV star, put them in an Italian production. They would read their lines, they dub over it, and uh, you know the rest is 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 dubbed beautiful magic. I love it. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, I actually never got to read Richard Matheson's novel, I Am Legend. It is, I, I plan to get around to it one day. I read um, it. It's, it's good. Now, here's, here's the thing with I Am Legend. So, uh, of course, we have the Will Smith movie that came out in the 2000s. My right. favorite interpretation, though, I mean, I love Vincent Price. I love The Last Man on Earth. But nothing is going to beat the Omega Man for me. With Charlton Heston, oh, okay, yes, from the from the seventies, because it's got like that what you can do, don't don't groovy score, <laughs> and you got Charles, <laughs> Charleston, Charleston <laughs> Heston is just grabbing the scenery and literally chewing through it, which is what we want him to do, you know, especially in the seventies. <laughs> I mean, he had that look. Charlton Heston has a sweet spot, uh, you know, for so many movies, but that. Uh, time period you had the omega man i'm not not talking about the same year but like the rough couple of years you had the omega man you had soylent green you had earthquake Damn, oh, i'm gonna watch myself some earthquake this week uh, i've been on this disaster <laughs> movie kick i don't know if i told you but Poseidon adventure towering inferno i'm gonna do earthquake i mean all the way up to uh, uh san andreas from a couple of years ago with the rock so yeah i just been i just been dining out on on uh disaster hmm. movies do we have a disaster month uh, no, disaster but we are going to start a disaster movie podcast very shortly. <laughs> we're, not that, we're not doing we're, that. We're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> this keeps us busy enough. I, I was going to say, at least not this year. <laughs> no, but Maybe you know, if I could quit my day job. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Hi, sinners. Yes, please. Uh, there's just send money in an envelope like you're our grandma, I suppose. Yeah, I, I'll take it. That's That'll okay. work. Yeah. <laughs> But that's like, all right, you know what? We'll put that on the horizon for maybe 2025. Maybe not a whole uh, podcast, but maybe we'll do a little offshoot for a month and just crush some disaster movies. Yeah, at least like three or four of them. Yeah, for sure. 
Sounds good. All right. What okay. do we have next? What do we got? Um, okay. So this one's a little different. Might have a couple different feelings, but still wanted to mention it. Okay. Um, so celebrating 20 years, Intrigued. 2004, Van Helsing. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So, Ow. My rift. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not as much love. I get it. Um, I still like to mention it, though. I mean, uh, Hugh Jackman is back with very anticipated, you know, Wolverine and Deadpool movie. And um, I don't know. I just I I feel like everybody kind of gets one. You know, this wasn't and this wasn't his fault. Like, I, you know, like, I don't like to me like this. This movie was bad. um, So not that I want to cut to that right, you know, right away, but it's, I think it's just known for the bad, um, CGI. CGI And I do believe it was, uh, yeah, I do believe it was a product of, you know, what they were working with. I'm pretty sure the budgets just kept getting slashed and slashed and slashed. Um, uh, you know, question. Yeah. Is is this, it is, I just looked it up. (laughs) Steven Summers. Yeah, yeah. So the Mummy, GI Joe. How? Um, I've watched the Mummy this week oh, two times, and okay. I plan on watching it. Tres compadres. <laughs> how? How does Stephen Summers go from the Mummy to? i You know what? I guess shit. We're gonna have to do Van Helsing because that's. I think that's an interesting podcast right there. How do you go from the Mummy to Van Helsing? And we'll do a little research and find out what the hell happened. I'm going to admit something, though, Shannon. This this could fall into a guilty pleasure for me. Um, okay. I, I this is a very bad movie. Yeah. But I was just like <laughs> I was just there. picturing a basket of laundry in front of me. I would watch the fuck out of this movie while I folded laundry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or wrapping presents that I don't want to wrap. Yeah, I could do that. Totally. So. Oh. <laughs> We might have to do a whole podcast on wrapping present movies. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I could come up with at least one or two movies for that. So that's no, a, that, that would that would be fun. <laughs> I have to ask you, and sinners, this goes out to you as well. If you're folding laundry or wrapping presents or doing your taxes or plotting a murder, whatever, whatever you're doing where your attention is completely focused on the screen. When None of our business. <laughs> None of our No, do you do you? Um, if you are finding what you want to watch and you land on something, are you ever like, oh, no, wait, I can't watch that because it needs my full attention. And then you keep scrolling to find something junky like Van Helsing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do it all the time. And then I have a list of movies that need my full attention that never get watched. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but then all your laundry gets done and you're kind of like, yeah, that really wasn't a bad movie. <laughs> I don't know. This has a lot of wrinkles. Does it? Does it get done? I don't know. <laughs> all right, so uh, Van Helsing. Have a stain on it. I don't know. There's a, there's, there's a good movie in there. It It's not on screen, but there's a good movie in there somewhere. <laughs> and it, it's, it will now join the litany of... Universal is going to relaunch the franchise. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it, like, what's that in the sky crashing into Earth? Oh, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, uh. <laughs> oh. At least they got to use some of the original. Uh, I think they used some of the original sets of the, where they filmed uh, the I, original Universal Monsters. The, so the they, had the, <clears throat> I love. They, I love. they had the idea. Yeah. All right. The execution. So, yeah. Van Helsing, but, happy birthday. Mm. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to uh, jump back <laughs> to 1984, and this is Firestarter. So, <clears throat> yeah, so this I found out um, uh, kind of allegedly um, is that, uh, so Drew Barrymore's mother, her name is Jade Barrymore. She apparently in uh, saw the book in a store, you know, already a Stephen King fan, because especially by 84, who wasn't, mm-hmm. she, uh, immediately looked at the cover. If you remember the cover of, uh, the book, it, you know, has a girl with the eyes and, and the hair like blowing. Out. Yeah. Oh, I think it's, that might I think be the theory. Like, yeah. I think Sorry, it was more I'm like confusing my book. So. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm confusing my books, but she immediately saw Drew Barrymore's face and she's like, Oh, I'm intrigued. Let me read this book. Uh, she buys it. Okay. Uh, her and Drew both read it, 
you know, her Drew becomes fascinated with the story, blah, 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 blah. And obviously would go on to play uh, Charlie. So one other interesting thing I found, again, allegedly, um, because I heard this in passing and I'm like, if this is true, I I don't know. I just find that interesting. So apparently um, when they started uh, production for Firestarter, apparently Heather O'Rourke tried out for the role. Ooh. Obviously didn't get it, but in parallel, you know, whatever, Drew Barrymore tried out for Poltergeist. Huh. And Little obviously didn't word. get it. Yeah. <laughs> now, hear me out. Okay, okay. <laughs> Alternate reality universe where I could still see it working. I, I, was I, could, just... ab- I could absolutely see Heather O'Rourke uh, playing Charlie and Drew Barrymore playing Carolyn. Hundred percent. I was just gonna say the same thing. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, right? it's like your chocolates and my peanut butter. It's still delicious. Let's okay. Right? Yeah. I, I feel like either girl could have pulled off either role. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, um, Heather O'Rourke scored with Poltergeist. Um, mm. Firestarter, which I look, I'll watch the hell out of Firestarter. <laughs> I will absolutely watch that movie all day long. Um, it's it. I don't. Love it. It's not a good movie, but it's Stephen King and it's Firestarter. Happy birthday, Firestarter. Love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're going to go to movies. We're going to do uh, – okay, the stuff in theaters, believe it or not, uh, you still have Late Night with the Devil also on Shudder. You have Infested on Shudder. Uh, oh, Shannon and I were just talking off mic. Uh, uh, Shannon saw Infested and gave, you gave it a, a, a pretty decent, right? I did. I did. Like I said, there's – you know – it's definitely influenced by another movie that I love. I watched and it's not, this week. I n- I need to watch it now. Yeah, I it's not it. it's not better than Arachnophobia. However, it's it's a nice modern day version of it. Can I? Um, yeah. Can I quickly do? I know I've done this before, but I really enjoy it because I get to tease my wife. Can I do uh, a little uh, interpretation of Jen? as I'm on the couch watching arachnophobia <laughs> ready. All right. We're, we're going to, I'm sitting down center. So we're going to do it like the Muppet show. I'm moving through the, <laughs> the living room with a basket of laundry <laughs> and, 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 and it says, <clears throat> what is this? That looks stupid. And then, okay. And then uh, on screen right now, it's a picture. It says two minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> the spiders in the barn now. Are there more spiders? No. <laughs> and then it's then this is Jen sitting down, and then this is Jen watching the, rest of the movie. She gets sucked in. <laughs> but wait, but wait, sinners, don't don't forget this part. Every thirty six seconds comes another question. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> I wish I I love my wife with all my heart. I wish he had just kept going to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why is that spider small? Why is that spider big? How come the big spider and the small spider don't attack each other? Why are they all friends? Are all spiders friends? What's up with John Goodman? How come he's not in any of this movie except like two scenes? And he was a big star at the time, right? Is Roseanne in this movie? Oh, thank God, no. Oh, it's a- yeah. yeah. Those are probably very valid questions. No. Although, <laughs> no. I, I, <laughs> I actually do have a question. Do you... Did they use the same, not obviously for every single solitary scene, Sinners, I don't want to spoil it on here, so I'm not going to get into it, but in the beginning, when we start the, you know, the horde, if you will, mm-hmm. the they kind of looked like the same type of spider used in Arachnophobia, because they're big and they're scary, and but they're harmless. Yes. I forget what it's called. Big and but scary. But it's big Those and it's scary and it's horrible. harmless. <laughs> what? The spider, when the scene with John Goodman, when he's like approaching the spider, and the spider's like, "What the? Oh, fuck? when he's just doing a oh, dance. What are you doing? <laughs> My gosh, you're big." <laughs> the spider wrangling this movie. So to answer your question, the same variety of spider, absolutely. The same a uh, spider. No, there were many. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And that um, and then the, the big guy uh, is a bird spider. That's a real spider. I mean, there was definitely an animatronic spider as well, but there that is a big, gigantic spider that eats birds. You're talking about arachnophobia? Yep. Oh, yeah. That that one was real. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But harmless. One in, no, the one in, um, you know, infested. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I may, I may have that stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I mean, sinners, we're gonna, we're not gonna spoil the movie, but we're definitely gonna spoil a, a one aspect of in, Infested is that the spiders grow to enormous size, and at the end, they kind of look look like king crab, Alaskan snow crab. <laughs> so that is the one that's the one part like the last yeah. time of the movie I'm like oh okay they took, well, it, it was a yeah they they took like the realism a little out of it where yeah. in arachnophobia it it I mean obviously it's exacerbated when um for the the mating I guess if you will but I it, I mean species do that have done that in the past where like two come together and then create like some sort of weird hybrid it's yeah. it's not it, it's it has happened absolutely so, Absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully will happen again. And then that will be the end of mankind. Did I say hopefully? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't mean hopefully. Um, not some kind of weirdo nihilist. <laughs> Just slipped out. Um, Just slipped out. Just, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, I, I do have to shamelessly plug an episode that I just dropped the other day, a little 10 minute episode uh, called Hot Spider Spring concluded where i wrap up my stupid eight month obsession with <laughs> killer <laughs> spider movies and the best part of it is that at the very end i reveal and shannon you will be a major part of this as well that we are going to be doing a summer long series called hot sharky summer that's mm -hmm. right <laughs> you thought i was gonna <laughs> shut the fuck up about animals no i'm not <laughs> nope. You're just you're just gonna replace it with another obsession. That's all. Wait but until we get infest, some movie. Infest, news. Infested can come to a close for now. Yeah, for no, now. We're, we're we're taking all our eight arms and we're closing the book on killer spiders for now. For now, something mm -hmm. tells me we're gonna get it infested part du in the yes. future. Yeah, yeah. We definitely have to expand further on this movie for sure. Yeah. Sebastian Vanasek, love you to death. I mean, I can't wait to see what you do next. If it's Infested 2, great. If not, we'll watch whatever else you do. Oh, I guess we do know. It's going to be an it's Evil gonna Dead It's going to be movie. the Evil Dead, yeah. Yeah. Exci I'm excited for that. And I, and I get why. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. I After get, I get why. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So t two movies. Uh, quickly, we have Mind, Body, Spirit, which is on VOD. Um, mm -hmm. That is the found footage yoga movie which is getting insanely good word of mouth. So uh -huh. Sinners, it's out there on, on VOD. Please find it. Um, I'm going to watch it this weekend. That's my little uh, treat for myself this weekend. Uh, and then we have, uh, not horror, but in the genre, we have Last Stop to Yuma County on VOD as well. And again, this movie is getting really, really good buzz. So Sinners, what are we doing this week as far as movies go? We are supporting smaller independent movies like we always do because we love them we love yeah. those movies yeah they need love too yeah kisses all over your low budget face um oh okay uh i'm going to just do two books and uh oh, sugar shack let me get my ipad because i didn't write down the plot synopsis but uh before i do that i need to sing a song and that is emily use you are the best. Not talking about lawyers this week. What I'm going to say is getting you back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, 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 me. You should start with that first. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, two quick books. The fr I, I have to, when I see um, uh, Haley Piper pop up with a new book, this one is The Ghostlands. Uh, of Natalie Glasgow. And this comes out, or it came out uh, May 1st from Rooster Republic. Ever since the death of Natalie's father, her family has found themselves caught in a series of bizarre experiences on their own, of their own. Unexplainable, irrational, and yet all too real. Has a demon latched onto Natalie's soul or are her family circumstances bound up in the aftermath of her dead father? <laughs> Haley Piper, that's all I have to say. Go check it out. This one, okay, ready for this. This one got me so excited. Whispers of Apple Blossoms by Brett Mitchell Kent. Also came out on the first from Leaf. An elderly widow who believes her late husband is haunting her houseplant. 
<laughs> must confront what? yes must confront the reality <laughs> that something much worse may be a play and has been for longer than she could ever have expected in this literary horror debut from Brett Michael Kent. You had me at Haunted House Plan, and I can't <laughs> believe that this is just coming into my life now. Are you nuts? <laughs> you, know, you know what's so funny, too, about that? I literally just got a gift from a, from a co-worker, she's, she's, simply just because she saw it and thought of me. And I'm like, ah. Oh. It's literally a black uh, pot plant, and it says plant coffin. Oh, <laughs> that, is, that is the best idea. Are you nuts? That right? is the best idea. <laughs> I looked at I was like, <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Does Not funny if it, someone gives you that about a pet, but a house plant, <laughs> definitely funny. It definitely looks like it's meant for plants and plants only. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love a good sense of humor. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, shoot. It's me. <laughs> News. <laughs> I'm like, all right, what do you got for me? Um, yeah, still you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, boy. You ready for the beginning of Hot Sharky Summer? <laughs> I know you are. All I right. am. Guilty pleasure of mine are... Uh, the 47 meters down movie. Now I would say that Which the first I one, like that one. Yeah, I would say the first one is yeah. not a guilty pleasure. That is a solid, good standalone film. The second one with the blind sharks in the uh, like Aztec cave is a definitely a guilty pleasure because it is not a good movie, but all <laughs> the shark stuff is dialed up to one quadrillion percent terrifying. Because okay. it's like, you know, someone like will turn around with a flashlight and the friggin' shark is right there or they'll light a flare and it's right friggin' there. And then there's this set piece that they do where they're, um, uh, they have like a beacon light that pulses red and then goes dark and pulses red and then goes dark. Uh. And of course, it like, you know, it's like two minutes of the damn thing pulsing red and nothing's there. And then it's the one more pulse and then the shark is right there and then it goes off and it comes back on and the shark is on in your ear, you know, and it's so... <laughs> Fucking terrifying! Oh, so and and I've seen I've seen uh, like actual footage of that, like you know during Shark Week, where like I remember there was one guy that had you know the shark like swims away and it's murky, so like it disappears, but it circles him, and then no. all of a sudden he just kind of turns the camera around and the shark is right fucking there. It's oh like it's God. it was like in a movie, except that it was real footage. <laughs> How about when you watch, uh, you know, you're checking out YouTube and they have cage diving, uh, and then the shark. Gets in the cage. Gets in? Yeah. The shark's like, mm -hmm. what you got there? You guys got a snack? What's going on here? I know. Every once in a while, I'm like, I should do that as a bucket list. And then I look at that video and I'm like, hmm. I <laughs> am the biggest chicken on the KFC menu, but I would do that. I would definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it would, it would take a stun gun and a cattle prod to get me in the cage, but I'd be glad I did it. I You'd would. be truly. Uh... Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, I. <laughs> I just, such an image I'd in my head like, now. What's the feces policy on this wetsuit? <laughs> Is it returnable? <laughs> um, with that, that said. Uh, so this, <laughs> this movie is called 47 meters down the rack. So there's no plot details. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it probably involves a rack. Uh, it is directed by Patrick Lucier, who did my bloody Valentine 3d. Oh, okay. Which I enjoyed. Nice. Yeah. With Jared Padalecki. Yeah. He's done. No a lies. Jensen Ackles. Wait. Uh, lies. Nope. Jensen Ackles. Jensen Ackles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you're right. Because Padalecki is almost the same year, if not the same year, in House of Wax remake. Yes. Yes. Oh, my. We're going to have to do House of Wax old and new. House of Wax. Oh, for sure. House of Wax new. I mean, I'm going to say it's a guilty pleasure, even though I think it's a good movie. And I'll fight. I'll fight everybody right now. It was abso absolutely better than I thought it was going to be. Look, there is, I'm sorry, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, to dunk on anyone, but there's the Paris Hilton factor of that movie, which, mm -hmm. which took a lot of people out of it. <laughs> and I support that. Uh, um, she's not a good actress and it was a marketing stunt, if anything. And, but, mm -hmm. but then they actually leaned into it and they're like, see, see Paris Hilton get killed. 
and people did. They really that's, wanted to see that. That's what I too did. <laughs> right? So um, the kills in that movie, though, are we bueno. I really like the kills in that movie. Oh yeah! Oh my god! The and then I think I think Jared Padalecki actually gets it the worst. He does get it the worst. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Sinners, if you haven't seen so this bad. movie, yeah, you might want to check it out. Don't check get out. too attached to him. <laughs> yeah. Or Paris. <laughs> or oh, or Paris. Yeah. Um, and then okay, let's go in the time machine and go back to the one from the fifties. And holy crap, I will watch that movie anytime. It's one, favorite, it's one of my favorite. It's one of. We have all the time, right? <laughs> it's yeah. It's oh, I, that's one of my favorite Vincent Price movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's totally up there. How lucky are we that when you say, "Oh, that's one of my favorite Vincent Price movies," immediately you're just like going through the little like uh, Vincent Price rolodex in your head, and you're like, "There are so many cards here of great really Vincent is. Price movies." I was just listening to <laughs> another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, horror weekly horror weekly i forget the gentleman's name who does that but he's very good and he almost has like a he's got a really smooth dj voice which is almost like uh what are they what is it amsr is that what it's called where you like you listen to stuff and you're like oh it's very soothing he's got that kind of voice he was talking about the incredible uh, uh, uh the abominable dr fibes and okay. then Dr. Fives rises again in the latest episode. And I was just like, God dang, Vincent Price has so many good movies. It's it's hard to it's it's hard to I don't even know where to go with this. I freaking love that man. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's definitely hard to stop once you get into that Rolodex, as you say. Yeah. Um Okay, Vince Price, we love your face. Okay, <laughs> so now we have uh oh, okay, so this, I'm not crazy about this idea, but uh, they're thinking about taking all the Strangers movies and doing a supercut, which would be four hours long. And mm. I'm like, who the fuck wants to sit through a four hour long Strangers movie? But there's got to be people out there, and I support you for what you like. You I know, wonder if I there was know. like a demand for it. That's new. That's definitely new. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, let me get the magic eight ball. For, for, for those... No. <laughs> for, for those not watching us on YouTube, Sean just vigorously shaking his head no. <laughs> I mean, but look, I, if the, I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope they do it. They're never going to do it. I hope they do it and people enjoy it. And good. all right, so there's a lot of strangers stands out there. So good on you. Okay, let's go back to sharks, shall we? All right, so here is a very, very exciting director who I really like, Sean Byrne. Um, He directed The Devil's Candy and The Loved Ones, Australian director. Did you ever see The Loved Ones? I have not. Oh, oh my gosh, write it down. Sean Byrne, Sean Byrne, The Loved Ones. Sinners, you too, write it down. Sean Byrne's The Loved Ones. The Loved ones. Ones. This is one of those horror movies where people are like, I'm into horror movies. And you're like, have you seen the loved ones? Like Shannon. And they say <laughs> no. And you're like, you have to see the loved ones. It's like, um, oh, sh- snap. What were we- oh, uh, freaking Lowell. Lowell Greenblatt from uh, Macabre Daily. You remember when he was like, I tell people to check out uh, Black Coat's daughter. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lowell, I do too, for sure. But this is another one that's just like Black Coat's daughter. You're like, oh, you got to check it out because it's it's kind of a hidden gem. It really just hasn't landed on people's radar. So he's an incredibly good director. And The Devil's Candy is really good, too. So he's directing a movie called Dangerous Animals. Would you like to guess what animal he's, is very dangerous in this movie, Shannon? What animal is it? It's a shark. <laughs> It's a killer shark. It's probably many killer sharks. All right. Check out this bonkers premise, which I cannot wait to put into my eye holes. Jai Courtney plays a serial killer who abducts people, takes them out in his boat, and then feeds them to great white sharks. Huh. So he just has like a pod of great white sharks at his leisure? You know how like there's like uh, the place, I think it's off the coast of a place that I don't know, and it's called the Red Triangle. Like it's a breeding ground okay. for great whites. So I guess, you know. Oh, okay. It, so he just knows it, to go there, basically. 
Shannon, he to goes there. there. If we got in a boat and went two miles off of Montauk, it'd probably be Shark City. You know, I mean, yeah. Great White Shark City. Yeah, you're not wrong. By the way, uh, sinners, we need to point this out. Uh, Simple Cut supports shark preservation. We love sharks. We love, you know, if sharks get their comeuppance in the movies, that's one thing. Although usually I'm rooting for the shark. But in real life, if, if you uh, 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 overfish and kill sharks, you're a big fucking asshole face. How about that? Stop yeah, you are. Yeah. Dick ass. Okay. Especially to make shark fin soup. Uh, no yeah, bueno. Not, are you fucking kidding me? Get it. No bueno. A- you know what? They literally cut, they just take the fucking fin and throw the shark back. Like he can yeah. fucking survive. And then the shark turns. Yeah. Yeah. And have tomato yeah. soup for fuck's sake. Yeah. And lentil, you know? We deserve we deserve to get eaten. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna disagree, but that escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Oh, you're right. It's, uh, oh, what, what's the stat? Um, all of a sudden this is turning into a National Geographic podcast, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I think the statistic is, and, and Sinners, this is going to sound wildly inaccurate, but I assure you it's not. Uh, people killed per year by sharks is usually like six or under, and we destroy, let's just call it what it is, we destroy over a million, I think it's even 10 million sharks. I think that was the number, 10 million sharks per year. It's Yeah, I don't know if it's that high still, but I, I really, really fucking hope it's not. But I'm going to look it up. I can uh, edit this. All right, so wait. Uh, you know you're not going <laughs> to. Many sharks are killed per year, and that number is... Humans now kill 80 million sharks per year, 25 million of which are threatened species. Catch data from 2012 to 2019 reveal sharks' death from fishing increased from 76 million to 80 million per year. I mean... Awful. That's worse than what you said. <laughs> it's, it's it's eight times worse. I know. I know. I'm so, This took a very... Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> ecological turn, but I don't I don't care. I think it's a good I'm, message to get out there. Yeah, go sharks. Go sharks. Yeah, go sharks. <laughs> that is going to be the um, tagline of this podcast, of this episode. Go sharks. Okay. Perfect. All right. Back to what you tuned in for. <laughs> What's up, Sorry, sinners. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. So we have Mike Flanagan is in talks to direct the next uh, Exorcist installment. Yes. Talk about landing the plane because you and I were both like, well, I guess the exorcist is done now because it's just floating out into space and they're going to get some, they're going to get some jobber to direct the next installment just to get the damn thing done with because they already spent 400 million on it. And then to read that they're bringing Mike Flanagan in, it's like, (gasps) oh Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. They definitely, definitely, like, okay, I see your piece and they definitely moved the, uh, the pawn. I, oh, I like, I love your analogy. <laughs> okay, so that's in good hands. Fingers crossed that he actually signs on because they're only in talks right now. Oh, Cracker Jacks. You ready for this one? I think you know this one. But if you don't, I'm going to get so excited. Have you heard of a movie called Flesh of the Gods that's going to star Kristen Stewart and Oscar Isaac? And it's I a. Do- mother freaking vampire movie i just read that yesterday <laughs> i just got dizzy just saying that sentence out loud i just got dizzy are you are sometimes you know what sometimes we don't deserve nice things this is a nice I, thing <laughs> oh boy i and may be a little i might be a little more skeptical on it but i'm i'm willing to always go in with an open mind well, it's directed by uh, Panos Cosmatos, who did Mandy. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So, so right. no, it's, prom- it's promising. It's promising. Okay. All right. I, 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 I'll stop there. You're right. It's promising. Let's, let's, mm. let's see if we get it and what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Then, <laughs> then we have the Talk To Me uh, directing duo, the two brothers, the Philip Poo brothers. Uh, boy, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, who did Talk To Me, which I we saw together. Yes. And I was like, I give it, I, I give it a, a, a thumbs up. I liked it. Now I love it. I, okay. I, sometimes movies need to like percolate. I really like that movie. Yeah. I definitely want to give it another go. 
Um, Check it out. I, I, I think it just wasn't what I expected. Either that or I expected more at first, but you're right. It definitely needed to percolate and and just sit for a little bit. And when you start picking apart the details and then like, putting the puzzle piece together in your own way, it come, it came together a little bit later. I had to wa watch it again. I had yeah. to watch it again. And then I was like, oh yeah, you know what? I, this, I, I like it more now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good on those guys. Uh, Sally Hawkins is going to star in it and it is called Bring Her Back. So love everything about that. Um, Jack O'Connell of the Tiger Beat Dream Club Fantasy Face is going <laughs> is join the cast of 28 years later. How about that? Nice. And then the last one we have, there's a movie that just won the Salem film one. Sorry. Uh, did, I, did it win? Yeah, I guess you would say won. The jury prize at the Salem Horror Film Festival. And that movie is called It Doesn't Get Any Better Than This. Now, here's what I love about this. The directors of this movie have said they are never, ever, ever going to put it on streaming hmm. or physical media. You can hmm. only see this movie, which won the prize at a film festival or a one-off screening. Like, oh, uh, really? we go to the Cinema Art Center and they're showing it for one night. How about that? Oh, that's so frustratingly good. <laughs> right? It is so frustrating. You're like, hey, like I hate, Like, I hate there? that so much, but that is very intriguing. <laughs> I hate that so much that I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's love actually it. genius. I'll love it more if it actually comes to a town near us. So yeah, exactly. Like that much more. <laughs> That's all I got. We got some. We had some really great news. We established that this is now a shark preservation podcast. <laughs> and, you know, we're we're fine with that. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Me too. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets at all. That's it, sinners. I can't do anything. I'm not contractually obligated to say the chat. I got to take us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a cut. Let's talk about Christian from the Black Lagoon.